Hi. Um, so this is pretty much just going to be a coloring tutorial for uh, my friend and partner, Hunter. Uh, I'm uploading it to YouTube because um, otherwise I think the video file would be too large to send an email without uh, sharing a Google Drive file, and that's just annoying. Um, so, yeah, uh, disclaimer, my methods of animation are a little unconventional. This is just kind of how I figured it out. Uh, don't judge me. I mean, whatever. So, I was going to go ahead and start with this one because it was the most difficult to do uh, line work-wise. I think coloring it should be pretty easy. Uh, but, you know, it's just got, like, a lot of overlapping characters. Um, so I've got these all pulled up um, for, uh, oops, wrong one. <clears throat> just, like, for, you know, color swatching. What, what did I just say? Okay. Um, and what I do is I usually use the uh, lasso tool um, and just kind of select out like the outline of the shape I know I want to color in that color um, and what I'll probably do is have the first frame of all of these colored uh, oh and I'm going to fill that in with the bucket tool and then command D or control D for your PC um, to deselect and then go in with the brush use that hard round um, setting and just kind of fill in any spaces. And usually I do this like after I color most of it in. Um, and, you know, go with the eraser. Uh, this just saves time. But what I was going to say was um, I'll probably send these to you with the first frame colored and shaded. Um, <clears throat> and then give you the easy part of just kind of like t moving the selections around with the frames. Um, but that, that's just so you, you know, have the swatches so you can just, you know, use the eyedropper tool and select. Um, and also so you know, like, where the shadows are going to be, um, for the light source. Yeah, so, anyway, um, I'll just continue with that. No, you don't have to <laughs> switch around all these files. Oh, oh, and I'm also, so this is the lines layer, that I'm, and I made a new layer underneath it, um, so I'm coloring on that right now, and then we're going to have some fun with layers, um, because, like I said, my methods are unconventional, but yeah, uh oh, what the heck, so yeah, I'll just, you know, color that in, um, Alright, so once you've got everything kind of colored in, um, it should look something like this. Uh, one thing, oop, I see a spot that I missed. So yeah, I'm really just kind of like moving, okay, well, yeah, uh, so I had some technical, blah, blah, technical difficulties, I had to, um, I'm actually redoing this segment, so I'm trying to remember what I have and haven't covered. Um, but yeah, this is what it should look like all colored. Um, about Senshin, though, since his hair and clothes are so white, um, it's going to be kind of hard to, uh, color that in, um, and not have it overlap. We don't want to do that because it'll stand out against the background. So I fill in the background with, uh, some other color. I just picked out this blue from the swatches here. Um, and then something I wanted to show you that, oops. <laughs> the lasso tool can do, um, I'm just gonna pick this straight up white, is, um, if you've already colored a section in, you can just kind of, um, uh, go around the outline carefully, but once you get to stuff you've already colored in, you don't have to, like, outline that as precisely. It will just, um, know to not, oops, why did it do that? Well, usually it should know not to do that. Oh, I know why. <laughs> I'm on the wrong layer. I, yeah, so I, I colored Senshin and Midori um, on a different layer since they don't move. So that way when you're, like, um, going ahead and uh, rearranging these colors, you can 
well, got to be on the right layer, <laughs> uh, erase them, uh, or like select and uh, move them without fearing of grabbing them and um, disrupting uh, their coloration since they don't move. So yeah, let me try that lasso tool thing again. Um, I'll just close. So make sure I'm on the right layer. You shouldn't have to mess with them, uh, their layers, but uh, I'll also include this hair too. So yeah, I don't need to go all the way around his face like I do on the outline. I can just kind of go around and bucket it and it should fill in everything precisely. Now that was a copy. I already colored them precisely. Um, another thing is uh, moving on to shading. So for the shade layer, I'm, I've already done a couple of these frames just because, you know, I had to redo this. Uh, I'm going to make a new layer. Oops, not a new group. Layer. Uh, change the blending mode to multiply. And I'm going to select... I've been using, like, this kind of darkish reddish brown. Uh, and the shading doesn't have to be too complicated. I've just kind of been going around the outlines of where I want the shading to be. And then filling it in with the bucket. Um, and I'm also going to move the opacity down to about 50%. Uh, that way it's not super dark like it just was. And yeah, so once you're done with all of um, the shading and stuff, and, and most of this will be taken care of for you in the beginning, you'll already have these layers uh, pre-made, but you know, just in case, you never know what could happen. Um, and yeah, just you never know what could happen. Um, it could be important. Um, but so you're going to select both of these layers, the color and the shade, uh, and copy them. I'm using Command J, you'll probably use Control. Uh, and then you'll move them up above to the next layer, hide them for now, so you can see this right here. And you're gonna take all of these layers, the lines, the shade, and the color, and you're going to uh, merge them together so that they're all one layer. Uh, that way, when I go in and make frames from layers, uh, what it does is it makes a frame from every single layer, and all these don't have anything on it because I have these layers hidden. Uh, <laughs> I've got a ton of layers. This file is very heavy. Um, and so yeah, it makes a frame for every <laughs> different layer, um, and that's not exactly how we want it to move, but as you can see, um, the, uh, no, not that one, I can, boom, there we go, now they show up for all three of those, and I didn't have to recolor them every time, but you can see all the colors and lines and everything move together for each of their frames. Um, I, there's some different shading there. Uh, but yeah, after you've copied that, I'm gonna delete this now. Delete. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna go back and show the next line frame layer. Uh, keep them open. Then you are gonna go and <laughs> don't erase my lines uh, yeah make sure all the layers or all the frames previously are hidden so you can see what you're doing now and you're going to just erase everything that's outside the lines and fill in all of the empty space and Again, you can use the lasso to make things easier. Uh, it, depending on your selection, uh, you might have to um, fill in the bucket. What am I doing? <laughs> uh, click the bucket tool twice, just in case there's a line of division happening there. 
but yeah, you'll just kind of go through and recolor in everything that's been displaced. And this is where, you know, selecting comes in handy so that way I can, like, move this up. And this is, this gets a little confusing, um, this process, so, but, um, with my selection, see I've grabbed some of her next to him, but I didn't grab any of Midori, um, which is helpful because she stays still. Um, but yeah, this process is a little confusing. Uh, I, um, it, it, it was hard for me to get kind of like the rhythm and the rhyme of it while I was working on, uh, that greed demo. Um, but, and, and, and it's, it's just like kind of convoluted, uh, but it's the way I kind of figured out how to make it work. Um, and yeah, so you're just going to kind of go in and fix all that up. One other thing I wanted to go over, uh, <clears throat> when I was animating the lines, I did not do the blood, so you get to have fun with that. Um, so let's just go to... All right, so that would be point of impact. Um, and I'm going to refine these uh, uh, um, I'm, I'm going to go over these lines, so I won't send this one to you right away. I think this is a good... Hmm. Why does it look like that? Hmm. Oh! I know why. Ha ha ha. Alright, uh, let's... Hmm. Well, it'll just all be really red right now. Uh, so, let's just say I want some of that to come out of there. And then, oops, uh, the next one, it'll just be, oh boy. I've got the black and white thing going on right now, just so when I, you know, the edited everything together, it was consistent. But like I said, I'm going to go over these with real lines, um, and there won't be a need for the black and white. Um, let me try, try this. Oops. And turn that off. Uh, so now, yeah, the only one I animated I need, like, blood on was this one right here. Um, but yeah, I guess, uh, just, you know, on the point of impact, um, get some gushes going out. And, uh, for this process, when, when you get to this one, if I give you this one, um, you won't do, I guess you could do the color like this. Um, uh, but it would most likely be more of, like, this horribly tedious method <laughs> of just moving all the colors around one by one. Because, um, I mean, I can't see uh, which, like, where the stuff just was that I was doing. Um, so I think that, I mean, that just helps, like, with that uh, being able to, like, copy it up and just, like, you know, kind of take it and then move it just a little bit, so, well, not distort it, move it just a little bit, you know. Uh, but yeah, you'll get to do, oops, yeah, that's what I kept doing. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, you'll get, ooh, actually, let's, let's, let's watch that. Let's see how that, uh -huh. that's kind of cool. Ooh, let's, uh, let's go into where she loses her arms. That's a fun one. Glad we got to do that. Alright, uh... So, let's see. Yeah, kinda hard to tell what's going on right here. I did, like, some implications of blood with the sketches. Um, you know, this is gonna be kind of blurred. Um, but, 
this. Ooh, let's put some kind of sword. Yeah. Yeah, you get the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see how that plays out. That's cool. Haha, <laughs> nice. Yeah, and even when she kind of falls down, I've made some um, blood pool out of her her arm stumps. So just something like that, um, with all the coloring and stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, let me know if I need to elaborate more on anything. Uh, again, with this, you're going to make well, you're going to take the layer that I colored and shaded um, and then copy them and merge them together. Uh, and in hindsight, it is a good idea to uh, keep a copy of the original colors just in case, you know, because you never know. Um, but yeah, I will finish up the shading on this one and send that over your way. Uh, and let's get this done. Thanks so much.